Welcome back to our debate between the candidates in the 18th Congressional District, Democrat Connor Lamb and Republican Rick Saccone. Moving right along, our next question goes to you first, Mr. Saccone. President Trump, as you know, has long dismissed the conclusions of the nation's intelligence chiefs. He's called the Russia investigation a Democrat hoax, fake news. He said last fall that he believed Vladimir Putin's denials of any Russian election meddling. Have you agreed with him all along? And if so, has your mind been changed by the indictments last week of 13 Russians and what National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster now calls incontrovertible evidence of a Russian plot to disrupt the 2016 election? So as I've traveled around the 18th Congressional District and as I've served in the state legislature, literally not one person has asked me about the Russian investigation. So I've focused on the, the, the uh, agenda items that matter to the people of this district. Cutting taxes, cutting spending, reducing onerous government regulation that are strangling our business. As I said, repealing and replacing Obamacare. Go down the list of those agenda items. That's what I talk to the people of the 18th district about, and I've talked to a lot of them. Um, I haven't focused on the Russia investigation. I'm glad to see that uh, Mueller came out and had his indictments and basically vindicated the president. There was no collusion there, which he's been saying all along. But that's not been the focus of what I've been on, and I, and I, I will continue not to focus on that because that's not what the concerns of the, of the constituents in the 18th District are. Well, uh, fair enough, Mr. Saccone, but as a potential member of Congress, it might interest voters to know whether you take this issue seriously or... Do you agree with the president that there's nothing to it? Fake news, hoax. Look, if, if, if what Mueller said is true and there's been indictments of, of people trying to meddle in our affairs, then we need to look into that. Obviously, we need to investigate that. But that's not the whole story. The whole story has been about accusing the president of, being, of colluding with the Russians, and that hasn't been substantiated. So I'm not focused on that, as I said, because there's no evidence to support it. I'm focused on what the people of the 18th Congressional District are concerned about. One, one more go at you. Do you believe the nation, do you personally believe the nation's intelligence chiefs that Russia essentially attacked our democracy and tried to disrupt our electoral process. Do you believe that? I believe that the Russians, according to the evidence that I, and I only have the evidence that you're, you have access to, I'm not in the intelligence community anymore, but I believe the Russians have tried to disrupt our, our they always have been, they have been all during the Cold War all the way through, all the way through today. So the Russians are always trying to disrupt our system. Thank you, Mr. Scone. Mr. Lamb, uh, I want you to address the same question, but let me add that the nation's intelligence chiefs say that Russia is already meddling in the midterms this year. Are they meddling in this race? I have no evidence that they're meddling in this race, Ken. My concern is that we might not know if they were, because I don't think Congress has taken this threat as seriously as it deserves. And I think you heard some of that in what Mr. Saccone just said. You know, he and I both served in uniform, but it seems like we learned very different lessons from our service. Uh, what I learned is that we have to protect our people and our way of life here at all costs. I believe we need new legislation and new funding to make sure that our cyber defenses are better tomorrow than they are today. We here in Western Pennsylvania are actually very well poised to lead the fight there because of pioneering work being done at Carnegie Mellon in conjunction with the FBI office here in Pittsburgh. We need to learn those lessons, take it national, uh, and yes, when the, our own national security advisor, someone appointed by the president, comes out and says that the evidence is incontrovertible, that they have meddled in our elections, I believe it, and I don't think this is a discussion about defending the president. It's about protecting our people. And is your take on the local electorate the same as your opponents? Do you believe this is not a top-of-mind issue for voters in the 18th district? I don't believe that because that's not what voters have told me. Uh, it's true that our people are very focused on economics, on health care, on Social Security, but we are all interested in making sure we protect the cornerstone of our democracy, which are free and fair elections. Rebuttal, Mr. Scott. I object to what my opponent just said. He, he made it sound as if he's protecting the people and in his service, and, and I'm not. Look, I, I respect his service of three years in the legal office, but I spent my career 18 years fighting terrorism, commandos, intelligence threats to our forces. I've been protecting our bases and our people. I've been out on the front lines. And then I went back to Iraq and served in Baghdad and Mosul, uh, gathering intelligence and saving lives. I'm all about protecting the people, and I object to anyone that, that, that says I wasn't, or I, or I have disregard for protecting the people of the United States. I spent a lifetime doing that. Mr. Lamb. Ken, what matters is how we vote and the positions that we take now. And there's a clear difference between me and Mr. Saccone on this and so many other issues. Next question goes to you, John Delano. Uh, gentlemen, I'd like to get you both to talk about religion in your life and public policy making, because neither one of you have shied away from talking about your religious faith. Mr. Lamb, starting with you. On your website, an 
a Catholic and a graduate of Central Catholic. And as a Catholic, you have said life begins at conception and you call yourself personally pro-life. Yet you support the current law with respect to abortion rights. This seat is vacant because the former incumbent preached pro-life, but then allegedly urged an abortion on his mistress. So are you saying that your personal beliefs are one thing, but your actions in Congress will be another? John, I do believe that life begins at conception. I've always believed that, and I believe it in all cases. Uh, however, I also believe in the separation of church and state. And what we're running here for here is Congress, not Cardinal. I don't believe that my personal religious beliefs should dictate the legal rights of women all over this country. Uh, it's a complicated and complex issue on which many of people of faith disagree. Uh, there, I have Jewish and Muslim friends who don't agree with me on this topic. A strength of our country has always been that we don't single out one religious belief and make it the law. I would not outlaw uh, a woman's right to choose. Well, Mr. Saccone, you've called yourself a man of Christian faith and have frequently sponsored legislation in this area, like bills to require all schools to post the motto, In God We Trust, and for the state to declare a day of prayer and to create a year of the Bible in Pennsylvania. So what exactly is the role of your religious faith in enacting public policy for believers and non-believers alike? In short, do you really believe in the separation of church and state? John, I got to go back to, to my, what my opponent just said about pro-life. This isn't a matter of religious faith. This is a matter of protecting our most helpless constituents, those that don't have a voice. I've enacted legislation. I spoke passionately on the floor after the Gosnell tragedies in Philadelphia, where people were being killed. Women were being killed when they, think they, were ha they thought they were going to have a safe abortion. They were being killed, in, in addition to the babies that were being killed. All we did was improve the, ins the ins health inspection limits in those clinics. And since then, over 20 clinics have closed. We've saved a lot of women's lives. We've saved a lot of babies' lives just by bringing the health inspection standards of those clinics up to the same standards of e as every other clinic. That's why I'm endorsed by CatholicVote.org. That's why I'm endorsed by National uh, Right to Life. That's why I'm endorsed by the Pro-Life Federation. That's why I'm, I'm endorsed, endorsed by PCUC. It's not a matter of religious faith. It's a matter of doing what's right for our most helpless constituents. Those babies have no voice. And more than half of those babies are women. And they are pronounced a death sentence without having any due process, without having anyone speak up for them. I believe that's an obligation of government to stand for those innocent people. People. But Mr. Saccone, back to my question. Do you believe in the separation of church and state? I do believe in the separation of church and state, but that is, has been misconstrued to mean that God has to be sanitized from our public life. Look, our national motto is in God we trust. It is, a, it is a Pennsylvania history story. If you haven't looked it up, look it up, in God we trust, PA org. Go see the history of, our, of it. It was started by our 13th governor right here in Pennsylvania. I think we should celebrate that. We just had the 60th anniversary of it as our national motto and the 150th anniversary of it on our coins. The Supreme Court has ruled that it is our national motto. So our government motto should be fit for our, for our government schools. That's why I put forth a, a resolution that passed unanimously to celebrate that. Mr. Lamb, your response to Mr. Saccone's comments? This issue is really about who is best to make these decisions. I believe that the best people to make them are women in consultation with their families, their doctors, and their faith communities, not the government. Uh, and I think when you talk about sticking up for our most vulnerable citizens, it's difficult to then vote for huge trillion dollar cuts to a program like Medicaid, which takes care of our elderly, uh, our single mothers, people who are suffering from the disease of addiction. Uh, we know that Mr. Saccone is in favor of cuts like that, and I believe that if you want to stick up for life, you have to do it from cradle to the grave. Mr. Saccone, you get the last word on this one. Thank you. That, that's such nonsense, what I just heard. The biggest cut to Medicare was Obamacare, which my opponent and his party supports. $715 billion uh, funneled from Medicare to pay for Obamacare. I'm not for that. I'm for, I'm for saving our system, reforming it so that it works for everybody. Mr. Saccone, policies aren't the only thing that divide Americans. The president tweets, and at times what seems to be tawdry tales seem to follow him constantly. Yet you are closely aligned with the president, a president that has refused to condemn a White House staffer accused of assaulting two of his former wives, and he has called some of the women who have accused him of sexual assault liars. Do you believe the president has a moral compass and 
are there areas where your morality is in conflict with the president's? Look, I can only speak for my own uh, morality and my own view on this thing. I've always been for uh, giving our, all of our employees a safe zone to work in. They should feel empowered to come forth if they feel there's anything wrong going on in the office or they feel they've been uh, misused or, or mistreated. Uh, I have all female staff on my legislative staff. All, I, I don't have any males in there. So I've always uh, surrounded myself with the, with the best people and they, they all, they've all turned out to be women up to this point. And I've always tried to treat them uh, the best way possible. And I am, I'm pleased that Congress has moved forth with a, with a plan now that if a, if a woman feels like she's been mistreated, she can come forth and she can go before a panel of people that will take her story seriously and investigate it thoroughly. I think that's a great first step, but I think we need to keep moving forward to make sure that people have the tools and they feel comfortable uh, that when they come to work, they won't be mistreated. And, and if they have a complaint, that that complaint will be heard. That's looking at the general issue, but very specifically, are there areas where your morality conflicts with that of the president? I, as I said, I only speak for my own morality. I don't speak for another, or judge another person's morality in that regard. I don't know what the, totally what the president's morality is. I do know that uh, since he's been in office, he has stood strongly for faith and for, for our beliefs and, uh, and, uh, and turning our head back toward the Lord. I, I, I applaud him for doing that. Uh, but beyond that, I don't know, and I won't try to speak for the president or judge his morality. Mr. Lamb, morality and leadership is a bipartisan issue. We've had several Democrats resign from Congress for their behavior, along with the very person that you're running to replace. What promises will you make to voters to assure them that morality really does matter? I think we have to set an example. Uh, and I learned early in my career as a prosecutor that you have to listen to victims when they tell you that they've been through a horrible tragedy, especially when it's rape and sexual assault. That's an area that I have some experience in. Uh, we have to be careful. And I think Mr. Sacone and I agree that, that people need due process no matter the accusation. I believe that's true for everyone. Uh, we do have to remember what we're doing here right now, which is that the person who held this seat previously uh, lied to our people and was exposed as a hypocrite. And so one thing I've promised uh, to all of our people is I won't hide from the people of Western Pennsylvania. I'll have town halls regularly so that if I vote a different way than something I said in the campaign, they'll be able to tell me about it. Uh, I am troubled by some of the things we hear out of the White House, but I'm most troubled by the budget they propose, the thing that they actually want us to vote on. I don't think that we should say things like America first and then cut the funding that Americans need to get by, whether it's Medicare or Medicaid or something as basic as funding for our Army Corps of Engineers that maintains our rivers. Uh, I would be against those things. Thank you. Mr. Sikhan, would you like yes, to Yes, thank you. I, I'm, it's comical for me to hear. Again, it's rhetoric over record. Uh, I have a record. I've been out to, to I've give, had more town halls than probably almost any legislator. My wife and I do over 200 events in our district a year, so we're out there talking to the people. We've over almost uh, 1,500 events since we've been in office. Knocked on 40,000 doors. That's enough to fill PNC Park. My opponent hasn't knocked on enough doors to fill the hot dog stand in left field. I've been out there talking to people every day for the last eight years. I'm one of the most accessible legislators. So when you talk about hiding or, or this type of Mr. thing, Chicago. we are out there doing, uh, thank you very much, do, doing what we need to do to, to be in front of the people. Mr. Lamb? I was actually talking about Representative Murphy, uh, who was famous for hiding from our people. Uh, and so I think we need to change that no matter who's elected. Ben? Thank you, Lynn. Thanks to both of you. Another quick break. More of our congressional debate on KDK-TV in just a moment. <laughs> 